Now that you've made it this far, it's time to bring it all together and publish both the WordPress entry and the Eventbrite entry to live. Now it's very possible you did this along the way already. You know, the system is set up in such a way that you can publish one, if not the other, both or neither as you see fit, really anywhere along the process. It's possible that you pushed the WordPress entry live but kept Eventbrite draft, or pushed Eventbrite live for some reason that you needed it on that side, and kept WordPress on the draft format. It really doesn't matter because you do have the flexibility here. But that being said, for this screencast, I'm assuming that you're at the same position that I am, which is that you're all ready to go, you have a WordPress post that's in draft format, you have an Eventbrite post that's in draft format, and you now want to publish those and start displaying the Eventbrite tickets within your WordPress entry. Well, let's do it. That's what we're about to showcase right here. I'm on the back end. I have my entry that's pretty much ready to go. You'll see all the details are configured, and it's already connected with Eventbrite. I know that because I see this Eventbrite event ID option with the link that I can click through to actually go modify this event draft on the Eventbrite side. You'll see it is in draft format via this red text, but I don't really need to modify it since I'm already satisfied with all the details. We have these two options here too, but I'm going to come back to those in a minute. Right now all I'm concerned with is setting the Eventbrite status to live, and then publishing the actual entry here on WordPress as well. When the page refreshes, we'll see that the WordPress entry did go live, and if we scroll down the page, the Eventbrite entry also went live. And when I click into this dropdown, you'll see I have a couple new options here now. Instead of just draft and live, I also have canceled, where I can cancel the event at Eventbrite, or deleted, where I can delete it entirely from the Eventbrite system. Now be cautious with these, because once you do canceled or deleted, you can't go back. You'll have to create your event again. And I obviously don't want to make that change anyway, because I want my event to be live right now. So I'm going to leave this as is. When I go actually view this event on the WordPress side, it looks good, but you'll see the tickets aren't actually being sold, despite the fact that I specifically configured it so the ticket sales would already be open. We can see what the problem is by going back to the back end of our entry, and down to these specific options. The first one is fine, leave this event associated with eventbrite.com. I want this to be yes, because if I set it to no, it's going to break the connection between Eventbrite and WordPress, and I will again have to recreate this Eventbrite entry. Display tickets on event page, this is important. Now it's going to default to no, but if I want to turn those tickets on, all I need to do is come in here and change this to yes. Come to update, and if all went according to plan, when I visit the entry on the front end yet again, my ticket details are indeed in place. I can check out with PayPal, complete the purchase. It's all in Eventbrite's hands from here, but once you actually have this in place, you know that you've finished the process entirely, and the new user primer has really done its, done its magic, done its job for you. You have an event that you created on Eventbrite, imported into WordPress, or just created on the WordPress side, the ticket and the event itself, and you push them both live, here's the end result. You probably will have a lot more details than I do. You'll probably have a venue, a map, a broader description, etc. But really, this is the gist of it, and this should be what you need to create your first ticketed events going forward. Thanks. Thanks for watching, and do let us know what else we can do.